Okay, so you should be on the first clean right side of your notebook that you have available, and you're gonna go ahead and title your notes. How many moles of this is that? And then in a little uh, parenthesis here, I went ahead and wrote mole to mole. This is just to help you find these notes again whenever you need to figure out how to get from moles to moles uh, more directly when we're not just in today's notes. Okay, so how many moles of this is moles of that? What is even the purpose of discovering that at all, really? And that's gonna be because we want to be able to look at a chemical equation and know how much of a particular uh, element or compound we need to get exactly what we want. So we do this pre-calculation using this multimole conversion to figure out how many moles of a particular thing we're gonna be able to produce with a particular reaction with how much we have on hand of a different element or compound. So we're gonna go ahead and look at an example a problem of this type so that you can see what it would look like if I'm going to ask you to convert from moles of something to moles of something else. And that's going to look something like this. I'm going to have a question word again. It says how many moles of O2 are required to produce 3.2 moles of H2O? Up until this point, we've only had one type of element or compound mentioned in a particular problem, but here we automatically see that this is something completely different than what we dealt with prior to this point, because this time we have two different uh, compounds, two different types of things that we're working with. So we have to take a different path. Now what we're going to do is since we saw that we had two different types of elements or compounds, particles, uh, things that we're dealing with here, we are going to need a balanced chemical equation, okay? Every time that you see more than one type of compound in a particular problem that I'm gonna give you, or you see on a test, or some sort of example set, we know that we need a balanced chemical equation. Now, if you weren't given an equation at all, then something is uh, off, something's wrong. Maybe you misread the question and you're not actually just supposed to go, and these aren't supposed to be different compounds or maybe you accidentally skipped the equation when you were initially reading it. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna present the balanced chemical equation that we're actually going to use for this problem in particular. Now the balanced chemical equation that we're gonna actually use for this problem is going to be for the synthesis of water, for the synthesis of H2O. Now, it is possible on a test or a quiz or something like that for your proficient, your mastery level questions, this equation may not be uh, stated uh, this way. It could be in words or it could be left unbalanced and you're asked to balance it first. Now that was a skill from the previous semester, but you should have notes on that. You should be able to look back and remember how to do that, how to count all the elements and all that kind of stuff. But today we're only gonna focus on just using that balanced chemical equation as you should already know how to balance it and we don't need to go over that particular step again. Okay, so this is gonna be our balanced chemical equation that we're gonna use for this problem. It says two hydrogen uh, molecules plus one oxygen molecule. Remember that there's, a, there's not a coefficient there, but that's an invisible one. And that is going to be able to produce two water molecules. Okay, those coefficients tell us what the actual ratio between the elements are. So for every two hydrogen molecules, I need one oxygen molecule to make this equation possible. Okay, so knowing that we can use these coefficients for ratios, we're gonna go ahead and connect the two compounds or the two elements, uh, the two things that are mentioned in our initial problem. We're gonna go ahead and visually connect those on the actual equation so that we don't get lost, we don't accidentally pull numbers from different people. We know exactly who we're looking at and who we're dealing with. So in our initial equation, we are given two 
different uh, compounds here. We're given O2 and we're given H2O. So I just went ahead and found those in the balanced chemical equation. And I just drew them together so that I could see that these are the only ones that I care about for this particular problem. Okay, so those are the only ones that I care about right now. And what I'm going to do with that information is I'm going to go ahead and write my ratio in both ways that it can be written. Remember I told you last time that um, all of your conversions for your dimensional analysis and for your stoic are ratios. They're not fractions. So these are going to be the exact same pieces of information. For every one mole of water, uh, oxygen, I have two moles of water. And for every two moles of water, I have one mole of oxygen. Those statements can be found up here. And again, just to get these, I just took the coefficient. I changed this from an invisible one to an actual one. And then I stuck the word mole in there because we are going to be dealing with stuff on a, a larger scale. And of course, if you remember that at the beginning, this set of notes is called mole to mole ratios. So it would be strange if we didn't involve the word mole. And also remember that our initial question asks us for moles. So these ratios should have moles in them. This doesn't change anything. Remember that the mole was created to uh, help us just scale it up uh, to a more macro scale. So it's not changing anything really. All we're doing is we're taking this number from this equation and then we're sticking the word mole in there and then we're just putting the, putting the compound and that's all we're doing there. So we've written our ratios both ways and now we're gonna go ahead and translate that initial question into math. We had it as English question, and now we're gonna go ahead and translate it to a math style question. Remember that our question word turns into X. Whatever unit is attached to that X is going to uh, go ahead and come down here. Now this you have to be super careful of because now we have multiple types of compounds in the same question. So we need to be super careful that we have what compound we are looking for. So you see that we have our question word, how many moles, and then it is attached to O2. So in my actual setup, I have X moles, O2, and then I have it set equal to the number that was given in the problem, just like last time, just like um, every time that you're gonna be dealing with a stoic or a dimensional analysis problem, this thing is always gonna be the number that was given in the problem. And then again, you just have to be careful to uh, make sure that you state the actual compound. So this number was given in the problem was 3.2 moles of H2O. So in my actual math version of the question, I have to say 3.2 moles of H2O. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and choose the ratio version that allows me to cancel units. Remember when we're canceling, we need something on the top and on the bottom, so it cancels. So I have to pick which one which version of the actual uh, ratio for our mole to mole ratio, we're gonna choose to uh, be able to cancel out this, this thing at the top right here. We're looking for the ratio that will cancel moles of H2O. So I'm gonna look between these two and I'm gonna see which one has moles of H2O on the bottom so that I can cancel it out. And I see that that is my left option. My left option has moles of H2O at the very bottom, so I will go ahead and choose that version and plug it into my dimensional analysis. Now remember, like I said, this horizontal line is division. Opposite of horizontal is uh, vertical, and opposite of division is multiplication. So this vertical line is my uh, simplified, prettier version of a multiply sign. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna plug that into the calculator. When I plug that into the calculator, I'm just going to go ahead and multiply everything that's on the top. So 3.2, I'm going to multiply one because it's on the top. And then I'm gonna divide by everything that's on the bottom. The only thing that's on the bottom is a two. So I'm gonna go ahead and just say 3.2 times one divided by two. And that gives me the number of 3.6. So just like with last time, I'm gonna write down every single number. Luckily enough for me this time, my number was a pretty nice number. If I needed to round that number, I would round 
after I had written out the entire number and then I'm gonna give my number an appropriate unit. So again, I took the number directly out of the calculator. If I was asked to round this number, maybe uh, to a whole number only, I would do it after I had completely written out every single number that came out of the calculator. Now that is every single number that came out of the calculator, and so I didn't really need to round. This is a pretty nice number, so I went ahead and I just wrote it again. I'm not done though. Remember that this is a naked number, so I need to give it a unit, and that unit that I'm gonna give it is going to be that same unit that I said in the beginning that I was looking for. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna write my final answer, 1.6 moles of O2. That moles of O2 was going to be that same unit that's next to the X there. It's the same thing that my question is asking for up here. I'm just gonna make sure that everybody knows that this is my final answer.